rolling that out. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess not all grass is created equal. They're going down the hill for the hay. Must be good stuff. Well, there's not much grass. I've oh. gotten blocked off. I'm, I've gotten blocked off from up there, that slope. So I'm letting that grow back. Nothing's growing. We're in a drought. What do you the risk if you don't keep everybody in good shape, then are not going to breed back good and they get skinny. A lot of demands on these mother cows right now, you know? Yep. Lactation, breeding bath. So, you just cut down some cottonwood because the cattle love to eat the leaves, right? Yeah, it's called leaf grazing. It's a good alternative crop to use late in the fall when the pastures are drying up. We're in kind of a, we're on the U.S. Drought Monitor is abnormally dry weather right now. So we're not getting that fall flush of pasture growth that we would expect, which could have an impact on how long we're going to graze this year. So Oops. I'm giving some of my pasture a break. And this cottonwood is a valuable resource. A lot of people don't think of it as a forage crop, but they do browse. Cattle will browse the tips of these uh, cottonwood, you know, a lot like they do aspen. Very closely rated. They're all popple type tree. Mm -hmm. So browsing is kind of an important food source too. Um, not sure what percentage of the diet that they can use on this. Probably really going for these leaf buds. So probably like oh, got yeah. about another week or two, a couple weeks of this. These these will start losing their leaves pretty quick. You see the popples are some of the first trees to change change colors. Oh, okay. Probably about another two weeks of leaf grazing. Uh huh. What is it about the? What well, could it be? Any tree? If you had maples here, would that be good too? Uh, no. There are some species not recommended to graze. Um, box elder, which is a type of maple. There have been, I guess, some reported toxicities of grazing. Oh. The leaves, I don't know if it's, uh, it might be nitrate, hmm. absorb, you know, retention in the leaves might cause some issues with nitrate poisoning, I'm not sure. Red maple, you definitely don't graze. Uh-huh, uh, well, you're in luck. You've got a lot of uh, yeah. poplar here. Yeah, poplar, yeah. Black cherry, you don't want to graze black cherry. But yeah, we're, this stuff grows like weeds. I could be cutting all day and I'd never, you could never have an impact on the couple hundred acres here. And this stuff grows in disturbed sites pretty well. Okay. Well, this is definitely a disturbed site. Definitely a man-made site. And I noticed one of the cattle, actually she came, so that, that chainsaw is kind of like a dinner bell. Yeah, she bypassed that hay that I brought, I brought her around bale of hay starting to subsidize the range right now with round bales every couple days. And you can see this cow ignored the hay and chose, has a preference for the fresh cottonwood leaves. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a good sign. That means that my effort out here is well spent because good. the cattle have palatability cravings to guide them to the correct forage for them to eat. They know what they're lacking and what nutrients they have to have. Would you supplement them with anything other than salt? No, just hay. Yeah. Just okay, hay. I saw a salt box up there. Yeah, yeah. Everybody does that, I guess. Yeah. We did it with the horses. I think it's overrated, salt uses. But... Well, they don't worry about high blood pressure, huh? Uh, well, they get salt in forages. Yeah. Know. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, they do crave it, just like we do. 
I don't think if you eat the right diet, you don't have to have added salt in the diet. I'm sure it's the same way with these the wide stuff. Very interesting. So you've got several interesting points to make for your, your forage walk, yeah, your pasture yeah. walk. Yeah, this will be some of the things I'll be highlighting. Uh, you know, grazing leaves. I guess in the drought of 88, people were cutting trees down for cattle. Wow, I remember 1988. That's yeah. when Yellowstone burnt to the ground. Yeah, so um, yeah. pull some of this. I got some other uh, alternate resources to use here. I'm going to do it. Yeah, and I gather you are always um, coming up with new new ones. Yeah. You've got willow trees here, I guess. Yeah, I Is that a willow? willow. Cut down a willow. Uh, if this is a black or a narrow leafed willow I'm not sure you find the uh, well a lot of, a lot of weepers anyway which are seem to be a classic pond uh, pond edge tree is this that kind of willow it doesn't look like it's no weeping. you're talking about like sandbar willow the real short ones. well no, they're pretty pretty they've got quite a girth on them and can get pretty tall well these yeah these can get sort of tall these look pretty young or are they yeah. a different kind of willow? Well, they're not the, yeah. The willow taxonomy in Michigan is, a, is kind of. It's a. Depending what book you read, they give you different names and different scientific names. Well, I think we have some invasive white willow or exotic white willow down by the lakefront. Well, I imagine since you pointed out to me this is not a natural environment any longer. At least that was my interpretation of this having been mined and disturbed for over 60 years. It's, it's you know, com been completely transformed from what it looked like 100 years ago. So. Oh, yeah, it's completely man-made landscape. Yep. And, uh, I mean, the lake wasn't here. These cliffs weren't here. Uh, this would be an old glacial moraine deposit. It's down in this part of southern Michigan. This is where a lot of the glaciers stopped and deposited huge aggregates moraines and that's why it's a it's a big mining area for uh, sand sand gravel and this is all the result of of mining surface mining for